One of the reasons for this weekend's occasion is that uh, contemporary Oberlinians and perhaps not so contemporary Oberlinians uh, have not known of this history and have not known of this ancestor of ours. And we thank you so much, Herb Shore, that through your words and your work, uh, Eduardo will live within us. Thank you. Dr. Shimao, if there are questions, would you be willing to entertain questions? Uh, feel free, if you have any uh, questions of Dr. Shimao, to ask them. Uh, we have a few minutes. We'll probably try to finish at about 9 o'clock. And uh, I should remind you that there are programs tomorrow morning uh, and tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow evening. Uh, were programs distributed out there as you came in? Does everybody have the schedule? All right. Uh, if anyone has any questions for Dr. Shimao, uh, uh, please feel free to ask it. If not formally here, then informally afterwards. Yes. Please. Well, thank you. It's a difficult uh, question to answer uh, because it covers a long period. But I can uh, maybe divide into two or three periods. Um, after the role played by the governments of the uh, U.S. for the struggle of independence for Mozambique was very little uh, or even inexistent. The support came from colleges, came from uh, different social and political organizations, and never from the government. And therefore, our relationship with government, government to government, after independence, were not good. On the other hand, it, uh, I should remind you that uh, the independence of Mozambique took place in the, uh, in the in the highest of uh, Cold War. And therefore, uh, American government did not agree with the policies chosen by Mozambique. But on the other hand, the government of Mozambique was pragmatic enough to establish uh, good relations with all governments in the world, independent, independently of their ideologies and policy options. And therefore, in a second period, we use different uh, ways and means to try to establish good relations also with the, the government to government. And this was accomplished by, in the late, or in the uh, beginning of the 80s, where our relationship started to change and uh, later, during the years of war, it was clear that uh, the government was m very much supportive to the efforts of the government of Mozambique to bring out about peace by any means to the country. That's why we saw actions by the, sponsored by the government which denounced atrocities committed by Renamo throughout the country. And one of these reports, which was commissioned by State Department, has a tremendous impact in the perception of the world about the type of war which was happening in Mozambique. So this was maybe, I'm not a historian, and therefore I don't have authority to say that, but I think this was one of the turning points in our relationship 
government to government between Mozambique and the United States. And uh, at the later stage, we received also a great deal of encouragement also for the negotiations with RENAMO, which uh, was a painful process. Because maybe most of you may know the very nature of RENAMO. RENAMO is not a genuine opposition force created by our own society. It was a creation of the Rhodesians, of the Portuguese, and also of the racist South Africans today. So it was, from the very beginning, an instrument to, for destruction and to make the progress of Mozambique not viable. And knowing that, and knowing that what they did to the country, and in particular to human beings, uh, it was said before that uh, I used to be a medical doctor, and most of my professional life was spent in rural areas where I have to uh, treat myself uh, hundreds of victims of war. And uh, I'm a witness on the condition in which these victims of war came. And therefore, it was not, emotionally speaking, not easy for the government to have dialogue and even uh, negotiation with that kind of people. But anyway, uh, we, more, more important than talk to them was to bring about peace and stability to the country. And during this process, which took us about two years, uh, we received a great deal of uh, uh, encouragement and support from the American government. And also for the following stage, which was the implementation of the Rome Agreement. Uh, today, we are at a stage where our relationships are very good indeed. We agree with Yacha in many issues. We disagree also in some others, but we do that with a mutual respect also. On the other hand, uh, there are a growing number of uh, um, American companies uh, willing to invest in Mozambique. And this is happening also because they are receiving also encouragement for, from the government. So without being much precise about the, uh, the historic timing, but this is maybe in, uh, but I have other friends who are very much knowledgeable. I have Janet and the others who can help me in this response. Thank you. Janet, do you have to, you want to add something? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Well, she's a good friend of mine for many years. That's why she's doing this. <laughs> Please. Right. Well, HIV is a growing problem. But somehow, Mozambique was paired to HIV scourge because of the war situation. Uh, war didn't allow free movements of, of people. And therefore, you find Mozambique uh, surrounded by countries with high rates of uh, HIV posit uh, positivity. Uh, but this is going to change uh, gradually. Uh, because with the peace, with the people, uh, moving around freely, this picture is going to change. Uh, today is not yet a big problem. Malaria is a much more killing disease today and will continue to be so for the next maybe 15 to 20 years rather than uh, AIDS. Uh, nevertheless, we are running a, a very strong and uh, uh, very strong HIV prevention program. When uh, I came back from England when I took my master's degree, the first assignment that was given in the Minister of Health in, back in 1987 was to just to create an age control program. So this was my first assignment. And this program has since then uh, expanded to reach out the whole country. 
Uh, however, there are challenges this program is facing. Because the assumption is that when you teach people, you convey messages to people, and these messages are leading people to change attitude, and changing attitude, they change their practices. Well, this happened somehow in a normal society. But for many years, Mozambique was not a normal society. Many of Mozambicans were not sure to be alive the, the following day. They were not sure to be alive the next week. They, they were Mozambicans without future. They were happy to be alive at that moment. You could go and travel to many remote areas to find out that people are very happy because they are living then and there. Because they don't know by the, day, by the time you leave them, there are somebody is coming to, to kill them. So when people are living in the, in the age of existence, physically speaking, don't preach them about uh, uh, moral values and the other things like that. It's difficult. On the other hand, people with the famine, people who, uh, who live in, the, in, in despair, don't preach them about moral values because these people they have more fundamental things to deal with. But we believe that with the improvement of uh, the social uh, condition of Mozambique, uh, more uh, positive attitudes in relation to this uh, disease is going to happen. One of my uh, tasks in New York over the last uh, 10 days or so was to try to sell out an idea. I said in my statement that our economy is improving. But people are telling us, look, you keep telling us with the nice figures, with all these fancy graphs, that uh, the economy is improving. But we barely can feel that improvement of our economy in our households. So what is the meaning of these figures? What is the meaning of this? Of this? So here we have a challenge to show, because part of these gains of our economy are swallowed by our external debt. So what I've been proposing to our partners around is that uh, they just give us a complete and total forgiveness of our external debt, which is nothing for them. <laughs> Thank you. Which is nothing, it's just peanuts for their economies as creditors, but is very, can be meaningful to our economy. With the understanding that we are going to use these savings to uplift the living standards of Mozambicans three, through three areas, health, education, and rural development. And therefore, increasing the living standard of, of Mozambicans giving them better education, give them better health care, basic health care. Today, only around 60% of Mozambique have access to any type of modern health care. So that means that the, the remaining about 40%, they are remaining on uh, traditional medicine and God only. So with the uh, forgiveness of our external debt, we can improve the living standard of Mozambicans in a very short uh, historical period. And the impact of some of these diseases can be dramatically resu resumed because you have a, a better educated and healthier population. Question back here. Yes, please. Pardon, uh, I didn't quite uh, follow your... President Clinton appeared before the UN recently. Yes. And I want to know if you said a word as to whether your government did or did not participate in Guadalajara. Well, uh, we were there. Uh, that's the point on what we have a representative. Uh, I'm leading our delegation to UN 
uh, the, in this session of General Assembly. But personally, I was not there because I was accompanying my pre own president in an official visit to Jamaica. So I arrived in New York the following day. But <laughs> Mozambique was represented there. I think there is some Jamaican over there. <laughs> uh, but uh, my government was represented. And yes, my government supported President Clinton, yes. Yes, please. Thank you. Uh, there is quite a lot which can be done. Uh, one uh, important here I just mentioned is to help to spread the word that, well, everybody should forgive Mozambique for, to write off the external debt of Mozambique. If this objective can be reached, it will make an enormous difference to Mozambique. So this is one thing which can be done. Uh, secondly, on in terms of NGOs, there are many NGOs we are, uh, we are working in Mozambique. What we are trying them, to, what we are trying to encourage them to do is to teach Mozambicans and particularly to target communities for uh, income generation. If you, any scheme you can devise to get rid of poverty is linked to uh, income generation. So teach families, teach uh, uh, communities how to improve their income. And there, there are different ways of some of them, you improve their cooperatives or you improve their small shops, you teach them basic techniques of uh, management, well, there is a multitude of things which can be done uh, to help to uplift the living standard of Mozambicans. What we see uh, on a daily basis is that somehow these uh, objectives are overshadowed by the desire or the, the necessity of NGOs to get funds for themselves. So they have to confirm themselves to their sponsors and not to the recipients of their, uh, their cooperation. And uh, therefore, they end up being an extension of their sponsors rather than uh, tailoring their uh, uh, intervention to the needs of, uh, of the, 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 the populations they are working with. And the second aspect of that, because of funding mechanism, usually NGOs, do not have long-term perspective. And you cannot deal with development in a short-term perspective because the issues of development uh, needs time. One of the dimensions of our development is time. And therefore, if your commitment is short because of your funding scheme, you are not how long you are going to, to stay there. Your effectiveness can be uh, actually dramatically reduced because of the funding mechanism. So this is some ideas of what can be done? Well, there are other things you can do, of course, which is to, to scrap the FMI, IMF, World Bank, and this sort of thing. Uh, uh, strengthening the ties between the Caribbean and uh, Southern Africa. Uh, and this relationship started many, many years ago because our struggle for independence in uh, Southern Africa received uh, always a great deal of support uh, from the Caribbean countries, in particular Jamaica. Mark Manley was very instrumental on giving support to the struggles of independence of our region. And today, we, 
more recently, we encourage the Secretariat of SADC, which is our Southern African Development uh, Community, to establish uh, formal ties with the Secretariat of CARICOM so that uh, schemes of cooperation can be devised. We have uh, many uh, areas of mutual interest for cooperation. Even during our visit to Jamaica, some of these areas have been identified. Um, so, but as two sub-region also, there is quite a lot to be done in common. And more than that, the desire uh, for that cooperation is there. We have, uh, uh, however, one complaint. complaint. Uh, people from our region go to CARICOM. They go to Jamaica, they go to other countries of the region. But we don't see much of your people in our region, so that, that's why this is the complaint we have. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah, mess with. Plexi, yeah. Thank you, thank you. You know, uh, Prex is half Mozambican and half American. But don't ask me which side is Mozambican, which side is American. I know that half of it is, is Mozambican. <laughs> well, if there are no more formal questions, again, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.